Microsoft has just released its new and eagerly awaited researcher agent into a public preview Frontier program for Microsoft 365 Copilot licensed users. This new agent allows you to conduct extended research tasks against both web and Microsoft 365 data. However, OpenAI recently stole Microsoft's thunder on this by adding a feature to its own deep research capability that would appear on paper at least to give ChatGPT deep research much of the same access to your data that was supposed to be the researcher agent's special source. So in this video, I'm going to put ChatGPT deep research head to head with the researcher agent, providing both with access to Microsoft 365 tenant data for grounding. I'm also going to show you how to get researcher to try it out and if you're an admin, how to turn off your user's access to this new ChatGPT capability, which could, potentially at least, put your business data at risk. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I advise smaller businesses on how to get the best from AI, including Microsoft's AI technologies. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. And as always, if you enjoy this video, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more. If you have a Microsoft 365 Copilot license, then getting access to Researcher couldn't be easier. By default, it's just under the Get Agents option if you're still seeing the old Microsoft 365 Copilot interface. Or, and more to come on this in a subsequent video, if you're seeing the newly redesigned Microsoft 365 Copilot, you head over to the Agent Store. Look for Researcher Agent Frontier and add it. And if you don't see it, either it might still be rolling out or your admin might have disabled access to it. If we're beyond the end of May 2025 when you're watching this and you still don't see it as an option, maybe reach out to your IT team for support. Researcher essentially layers the power of OpenAI's O3 deep reasoning model on top of the normal capabilities of Microsoft 365 Copilot to see the data you have access to in your tenant. It has access to your files in OneDrive and SharePoint, emails, chats, meetings, etc. It also unless you turn it off or it's been deactivated in your environment, has access to the web. Researcher itself is an agent, so you cannot currently invoke other agents from it by typing an at in the chat, but Microsoft has shown off future integration with the Copilot for Sales agent, and the intent here is that Researcher will be able to be a multi-agent orchestrator in order to pull in data or skills from elsewhere in your Microsoft 365 Copilot agent collection. The point of Researcher is to help you with tasks that require extended thought and content retrieval. The example shown by Microsoft here when Researcher was announced is about developing a product strategy. You could take a prompt like this and run it through the base Microsoft 365 Copilot and it would give you a response. But it would look at a handful of sources and it would generate maybe a page to a couple of pages of insights. But for a task like this, that's probably not enough. So Researcher will start off by clarifying your intent with some questions. It'll lay out the steps it's going to go through, research through that stuff in much more detail and with much more content, and give you a more sophisticated information field response. Now jumping over to ChatGPT, Deep Research, which originally leveraged their O1 Deep Research model, and now I think is pointed at O3, just like Researcher, has been in our hands for a few months. But in general, I caution here that the big difference between ChatGPT and Copilot is organisational context, as Copilot can see all our files, but ChatGPT can't. However, in an update that came maybe a few days before many users got access to Researcher in Microsoft 365 Copilot, OpenAI added this. You can now ground ChatGPT's deep research response on SharePoint content. So what's going on here? Well, you may recall a few months ago, I looked at a new capability ChatGPT had added to connect their service to your Microsoft 365 account to make it easy to upload context documents from the cloud without first downloading them to your PC. I'll put a link to that video down below. This feature is still there, but this new integration takes that further as instead of you needing to select which files will be reasoned over as you did before, now with SharePoint access turned on for deep research, ChatGPT will actually search your SharePoint and OneDrive content on its own to ground the response it offers you. This is still substantially different to what's available in Microsoft 365 Copilot. First, Copilot doesn't just have access to SharePoint and OneDrive, but other data sources like Teams and Outlook. 
It also has access to content beyond simple files, like content in Loop and OneNote pages. And lastly, the search infrastructure available to Copilot is built specifically to enable the smart, contextually aware retrieval that AI tool needs to do its job. The whole job of the Copilot orchestrator is to get the right context to the AI model and pass the right response back, and its scope of work is pretty much anything you can see inside Microsoft 365. ChatGPT's integration can solely leverage files in SharePoint and OneDrive, and exclusively through the capabilities of the Search API exposed in the Microsoft Graph, specifically accessing the search scopes allowed by the Files Read All and Sites Read All graph permissions. But that said, more often than not, a very large amount of the citations I see in Copilot responses do come from files in SharePoint or OneDrive. So in a like-for-like -like situation, where files will suffice for grounding, wouldn't it be interesting to see how Researcher Agent performs against Deep Research head-to-head? -head? From asking if Microsoft 365 Copilot is the right product for your business, to working out how Agentic AI can amplify the ways you delight your customers, there are lots of questions swirling around AI strategy and AI adoption for all businesses right now. And while the technology is important, understanding how all the pieces fit together in a way that's relevant for your business and your people is even more so. If you need an advisor or a personal or team AI coach to start or support your journey, I offer services to help you. I work with small and medium-sized organisations that are looking to maximise the benefits of AI in a safe and responsible way. And I'd be happy to connect with you to understand your situation and outline how I can assist you to succeed with this technology. Take a look at the links down below to find out more and to get in touch. To facilitate this test, I provisioned a new Microsoft 365 user with absolutely nothing in Teams or Outlook and just access to a bunch of project files for a fictitious project called Project Breadcrumb. Don't blame me, Claude came up with these ideas so it didn't feel left out. The files include Word and some Excel and I think there's some PDFs in there. On the ChatGPT side, I've ensured that both custom instructions and memory are turned off to ensure no past interactions influence the outcome. Project Breadcrumb is just a demo that is about a, a software project to help you with tabs that you might have left open and forgotten about and then lost uh, for some reason. And the idea of the breadcrumbs is like a trail of breadcrumbs to get you back to where you want it to be. The prompt we're going to use is this. Develop a detailed project overview and competitor analysis for Project Breadcrumb. Provide an executive summary with specific project details and create a thorough competitive landscape analysis. This prompt is designed to test the ability of the research agents to find and select the right content for the task. To be able to do this, they will need to use both SharePoint files and the web. Let's start with Researcher. Researcher gets started by asking clarifying questions about my request. All of them are reasonable, but I want to see what it does without too much guidance. So I tell it to just go ahead and use its best judgment, as it suggests. This is useful, as so often users will ask Copilot how to complete a piece of work, and so you might genuinely not really know what you're looking for exactly. When you start with Researcher, it then goes out and starts searching. The agent tells you what it's doing as it goes, but I have to admit, having used this several times, I'm not 100% sure that it isn't just the model doing a bit of performative explanation as it goes about things in the background. There has been research that has shown that AI models might explain their reasoning by reverse engineering what they've already done rather than truly explaining as they go. I assume the references to 5,000 numbers in these reasoning steps is some sort of internal indexing the agent uses for the files it has accessed. It'd be great if the file names or even the links to them could show up here. After just over four minutes of activity, researcher responded with what seemed like a fairly reasonable report. If you want to get it out of the Copilot interface, as I think most of us would, the only option is to push it into a Copilot page, but from there you can export to Word. So getting the content out, given the nature of the content, is a little more cumbersome than maybe it should be. Now, jumping over to ChatGPT, I'll start in exactly the same way. Remember though, that here, this is a feature of ChatGPT rather than a separate agent. So I have to select Deep Research and also select for SharePoint and web sourcing to be turned on. The first clarifying question from ChatGPT left me scratching my head. 
Instead of noticing it had access to a rich selection of contextual data, it asked me to provide a lot of information about Project Breadcrumb, the industry, the deliverables, and even competitors. Hang on a minute, isn't that what I just asked you for? And unlike Researcher, where it gave me the option of just letting it do its thing, it gave me the impression it required this information to carry on. I'll be honest though and say that in testing deep research generally and this specific feature, the run where I recorded for this video was the only one where it asked for such a lot of information in this way. More commonly, it would just ask where to search from. And with minimal clarification, I let it proceed. I must say that on a purely visual basis, I far like the way ChatGPT lays out this feature on screen than the researcher agent. Having a sidecar where you can monitor both activity and sources independently as it goes makes a lot of sense to get some idea of whether it's pointing in the right direction. However, that's just a personal preference. After about double the time it took to generate the response with Researcher, deep research is done. And on the face of it, the content is broadly similar. At a glance, it looks like what we've asked for. And ChatGPT actually gives you similarly simple options to work with the output. You can download a PDF, share a link to it, and even edit it in Canvas. The fact that ChatGPT service isn't wrapped in its own productivity suite really doesn't seem to mean that it loses any pace with these output options. Now, I looked through the responses, and honestly, from my perspective, they both had their pros and cons, but each did the job I asked for. And while they deviated on things like the specific competitor products they looked at, they did a similar job in analysing them in broad strokes. Researcher provided more information, its response contained around 50% more words than deep researchers. However, there's a problem with these sorts of demos. I could give you a subjective opinion of which tool is better based on me having tried both on real work that I know well and I have contextual understanding for, or I could show you made up demos like this, where it's largely impossible to demonstrate true efficacy as there's nothing of value on the line. This is the problem with all of Microsoft's perfectly designed demos too. Making these tools look like they're working is far easier than actually making them work. I have to say, since getting Researcher, I have been impressed with it, but I wanted a less subjective approach to comparing the two outputs. So I turned to some of ChatGPT and Copilot's AI cousins by having Gemini 2.5 Pro and Claude Opus 4 act as judges. I've shared with each of the judges some basic context. Why I was asking them to judge these reports, what prompt I used to generate them, and a selection of the contextual information on Project Breadcrumb that each of the research tools had access to. I asked them to score out of 10 on four criteria. How well does the tool respond to the prompt? How accurately is the project described? How much value is added with new information? And how appropriate were the sources used? And the winner from both was Researcher Agent confirming my gut feeling in using this so far that Microsoft's foray into this world has indeed provided us with a step up in quality. However, the fact is that even scoring in this way, this is a largely subjective issue, and you might differ in your opinion. But there are a few more considerations on this topic. First, if you're an admin, you might be looking at this in utter bewilderment that suddenly there's a tool in ChatGPT that enables any users to search for and grab any Microsoft 365 files they have access to and pull them over to OpenAI servers. If you subscribe to ChatGPT Team or Enterprise, then probably you're okay with this idea. But if users are on their own ChatGPT Plus accounts, then you might have more questions. Is this some weird workaround of Microsoft security that ChatGPT has found? Or has Microsoft sold out your data as part of their deal with OpenAI? No, and no. By default, in every Microsoft 365 tenant, users can connect external apps. This integration to ChatGPT uses exactly the same approach as Calendly does to get access to shared calendars, for example. But if you want to turn it off, it's pretty simple. Head over to the Azure portal and enter the Enterprise Applications screen. Search for ChatGPT. There, under Properties, you can set the app from Enable to Disabled. You can require users to be assigned to it. And under Users and Groups, you can see who has provisioned the app. However, you might also want to think about changing the default for all apps to only allow them to be added after admin consent. This will allow you to avoid anyone signing up when DeepSeek chooses to add a similar feature. And of course, as a user, be considerate of your company's policies and data governance expectations when using these features. 
if you wouldn't be allowed to attach the files in question to a personal email, then it's likely that you should apply the same logic to your personal ChatGPT account. Now second on these features themselves, I think there's a big opportunity here for this type of capability. One really quick win in my opinion would be making that first step of asking clarifying questions happen only after searching for contextually relevant content. If we think of this first interaction as the AI agent requesting a quick sit down to clarify your requirements after you sent your researcher some email instructions, we probably wouldn't expect that researcher to walk into that conversation without having done a little homework first. Overall, I agree that right now, Researcher seems to be the winner in this specific use case, where we are searching for files in Microsoft 365 as the basis for some research. I don't necessarily think this holds true when this grounding advantage is lost, and deep research in ChatGPT remains a very strong offering. However, if you have Microsoft 365 Copilot, you are certainly losing nothing in efficacy by using the Researcher agent, and you're gaining the fact that everything is happening inside your Microsoft 365 tenant with access to all of your useful data. What do you think? Have you tried these tools out yet? Let me know your experience in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.